Hi, now what I want to show you in this video is how the determinant of a 2 by 2 transformation matrix represents the area scale factor of any transformed shape. And to do this, let's just say that we call this matrix A. And if we take the unit base vectors, 1, 0, 0, 1, and around the outside form what we call a unit square, then this point here, let's say we call it P, has coordinates 1, 1. And if we just take the endpoints of 1, 0, call that I, and the endpoints of 0, 1, call that J, then we've got our unit square O, I, P, J. And if we want to find the image of this unit square under this transformation matrix A, then we need to put down the shape matrix for O, I, P, J. And multiply it by A. So if we do that, here's our shape matrix for the unit square. We've got the origin, we've got I, and then P, and then J. So if we multiply this out in the usual way, we get the image matrix. So this will be the origin. You'll notice it stays invariant. And if we call each of the image points with a little prime here, so the origin it becomes O prime. Now we've got I prime, P prime, and J prime. So what does this shape look like? Well, if we just draw up some axes, we can see that the origin stays put. But for I at 1, 0, okay, it now moves to a, C. So, in other words, let's assume that this is the point I prime. I prime and it has coordinates A and C. Okay? And similarly, if we look at J, that goes from 0, 1 to the point BD. So, I'm going to assume that that is this vector here. Okay, this point here is J prime and it has coordinates B, D. Just mark those in. Now, when I look at this, I can see that this displacement here is B units across and clearly D units up. Let's just mark that in. That's B units and that's D units there. So when I look at the point P prime, the image of P, P prime has an x coordinate of A plus B. Well, I can see that this displacement across here is A units. So I've now got to just go another B units, the same as what we've got here. And I can also see that the y coordinate for P prime is C plus D. Well, this displacement up here is C units, and then I've got to do a further D, which corresponds to what we've got up here. So in other words, I can see I've got the same displacement from the end here as I had with the green vector. So if I just put that in, we've got that this point here now must be P prime. P prime with coordinates then, a plus B and C plus D. And that means that we have a parallelogram here. So I can put in the fourth side here. Now if I just start to complete the rectangle around the outside of this shape, okay, we're going to have something like this. I'm marking a few displacements. I can see that if I go across from here, this is B units. It was C units up, same as this one here. From here to here was D units, because the height of P prime was C plus D. 
we can see that it's got to be the same height here as we have here. So if this is D, this must be C. And as for the length of this, well, this is A plus B. Now I can see that what I've got are the two triangles. The two triangles, which we'll just shade in blue, they're exactly the same. They're going to have exactly the same area. OK. And we've got a trapezium here, which we'll just shade in. And this trapezium is exactly the same size as this trapezium down here. OK. So when it comes to working out the area of the parallelogram O I prime P prime J prime, then all I've got to do is just work out the area of the rectangle around the outside, subtract then the area of the triangles and the two trapeziums. So let us just do that, okay? We'll border this off. So we have the area of O prime, or just O, we'll just leave it as O, I prime, P prime, J prime, okay? That area is going to be the area of the rectangle, which will be A plus B, one side, multiplied by the length of the other side, C plus D. And then from this, we need to subtract the area of the triangle. Well, we've got two triangles exactly the same, so we can say two lots of the area of the triangle, which will be the base times the height, B times D, and then divide that by two. And then to this, we're going to add the area of the trapeziums. We'll just take one trapezium. We've got two of them here, OK? So for the area of a trapezium, do the sum of the parallel sides times the distance apart and divide by two. So the sum of the parallel sides will be A plus B plus another B. That's A plus 2B. We multiply this by the distance apart, which is C units, and divide by 2. OK, so just bracket that off. Now if we expand this, we've got A times C, AC, A times D plus AD then B times C, so plus BC, and B times D plus BD. Now when I expand the bracket here, the twos will cancel on each of these two terms, and we'll have minus then BD, minus BD, and then we're going to have minus A plus 2B times all of C. So if I expand that, I'm going to have minus AC, minus 2BC. And so if we simplify this, what do we have? Well, we have the AC cancelling out. We also have the BD cancelling out. And then we're left with AD. And then we have BC minus 2BC, so it's going to be minus BC. Now, AD minus BC is the determinant of the transformation matrix A. So this equals the determinant of the matrix A. So you can see at this point then that the area of our transform shape has a scale factor equal to the determinant of our transformation matrix A. Remember this area was of one unit. So this gives us the scale factor of that area transformation. Now, determinants aren't necessarily always going to be positive. They can be negative. So what happens if we end up with a negative determinant for a transformation of the unit square? Well, all that happens is that our vectors for I prime and J prime have just switched positions. You'll notice that I prime is now above J prime, okay, unlike what we had over here. It appears that they've just switched over. However, the area is going to be exactly the same. 
we still have our parallelogram, the same parallelogram actually, it's just flipped over. So what happens is that our determinant of A is the negative of what we had here. So essentially all we're interested in is the unsigned determinant of A, okay, as giving us the area scale factor. So whether we get a minus, whether we get a positive, just take the actual positive value that you get, okay? So in summary, what we've got is that if we have a transformation matrix then A, B, C, D, okay, we'll call it say A, what this does is that it changes, okay, the area, let's just put this in, changes the area by a factor, okay, which is equal to the determinant of A, but remember that determinant of A could be positive, it could be negative, so we just take the positive value, so I've actually put that in its modulus sign here. Alright, so this here is a very important point then about how the determinant gives us that area scale factor for the transformation. Alright?